welcome to Crave the Book, episode 23. In today's episode, we're going to be covering chapters 23 through 27 of Tracy Wolf's Crush. And in this episode, we are really going to be directing a lot of focus into spoilers, into predictions for court. By the time you guys listen to it, you will have had court for two days. But as of right now, at the point of recording this episode, we don't have court until tomorrow. So we want to get our final fan fan theories out into the open, get our predictions out there, because next week we are going to be dedicating the entire episode to court. So guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with chapters 23 through 27 of Crush. All right, guys, tomorrow, 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 court comes out tomorrow. Actually, it comes out at like <laughs> at midnight. Um, I'm going to be that crazy, insano person who gets it on ebook tonight, and then I'm going to wake up early and I'm going to go to Target, and I'm going to buy the Vampire Court Edition. And then apparently, since Barnes & Noble is right down the street, um, Amber has convinced me to go buy the Dragon Court Edition as well. And then I'm going to sh- ship her one of the copies, whichever one she decides that she wants. And then we'll be able to see those chapters. And I don't know how I'm going to get Witch's Court. I'll figure it out. But um, it'll guys, be, It'll be later for you. So if I can... Because I, I am being dropped off by my husband at 8 a.m. in town to go and get it. If there is a special edition for the UK version, then I can let you know ahead of time which one I got. Okay. And that will be the only thing that I will talk to you about. Yeah, we need witches. <laughs> we'll be, uh, I got this one. We need witches and then Gargoyle was independent bookstores. I will also be getting Gargoyle... Um, bonus chapters from my bookish box order as well whenever that ships we still don't i don't even know what the covers we've got the the first book cover and we have the cover for crush but they haven't even revealed what the other covers are supposed to be so who knows but um guys this is the last time that we're going to be talking about theories for court because by the time the next episode airs which will be a court dedicated episode i I know that we're in the middle of reading crush but we're going to have one episode where we get to kind of overview court because we know that you guys are you guys are going to want to talk about it um so next week's episode is just going to cover court it's not going to be like a chapter by chapter we're kind of going to review the whole book if you do not finish court by the time next week's episode comes out feel free to come back to it because the whole episode is going to be spoilers i mean it's basically just going to be us um going over court and our thoughts and everything and figuring out you know which of our crazy fan theories were confirmed but Amber and I aren't allowed to talk to each other about court until that episode. So this is the last time she and I are going to be allowed to talk about it because we want to have just a completely authentic, organic uh, conversation about the book. And I have a feeling it's going to be hard. I have a feeling we're going to get to parts and we're going to start like screaming and yeah, <laughs> we're not allowed <laughs> well, to. Well, you never know. If if you're tempted, you might have read the ebook before me because there's no way that I can stay up until midnight um, at all in any way, shape or form. I'm just not built for night owl at all. <laughs> um, but I could have absolutely read either all of it or the majority of it by the time you wake up. Yes, I know that. And I definitely um, <laughs> won't read that much. At, by midnight, I am very tired. So even if yeah. I were to get it, I wouldn't take that much in. So I, I say that I'm going to do that, but I'm probably not. I'm probably, I'm probably Does not. Does it release midnight on the, for the country of origin? So will it be? Uh, it's it's based 5 on your country. Me. Will it be 5 a.m. my time? No, it'll be midnight your time. It'll be oh, midnight. Time. It'll okay. be midnight my time too. It'll be, it depends on where you are. It will, it should release okay. at that time. So yeah, th- I'm thinking of going. So, um, in town, I can go to Waterstones, which is where I'm getting it. I pre-ordered it. And I managed to use a gift voucher that I got for my Christmas present. <laughs> so I got it for free. Um, and uh, I think I might go to the coffee shop down the road and either try and read all of it or at <laughs> least some of it before I feel guilty that I'm not working. <laughs> I believe that Tracy said that it's a thousand pages. 
So I don't think you're going to read all of it, though I do know that you're a speed reader. I don't, I want to take the full week to read it. Like, I don't want to read it as fast as I can, but I do want to read it by next week's episode. So, um, but guys. See, I, do, I, I never plan to read things fast. It just, just happens. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, today, guys, we're going to be covering uh, chapters 23 through 27 of Crush, though. Though, I mean, uh, some a decent amount of stuff happens in these chapters, but because this is our last one before court comes out, a majority of the episode is going to be dedicated to fan theories. So if for any reason you're new here, if you're new to this series and you actually haven't read past chapter 27 of Crush, there's a sound that you're going to want to listen out for so nothing gets ruined for you. Amber, do you want to tell them what that sound is? Yes, the very, very branded and very recognisable wolf howl that we seem to have coined now will be playing uh, sounds just like this. Um, and once that sound plays, that means that everything past that point will be a spoiler, especially for this episode. This episode probably be, will be the worst um, because we need to offload everything because I don't know about Starla, but I, I've reread crush and cover within the last 48 hours i literally sat and i blitched through it over the weekend um so that i was prepared for court um and also there was loads of things that i said in like the spoilers like my theories that have already been quashed because of things that came up within cover that i just didn't remember so um i'm glad that i reread them because i felt like i was kind of leading you all astray ah <laughs> uh. Well, I am, where am I? Um, I am going to finish Covet tonight, which is one hell of a task because I'm still kind of at the beginning, but I'm going to dedicate my day to it. Um, I am currently in the part where Grace and Hutters are on their way to the blood letter. So very much at the beginning. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Quite, quite, quite close to the beginning. Yeah. But I'll, I'll be able to finish it tonight. I can, I have to go to the gym. So I'm going to put on my headphones and I'm going to listen to the ebook, which I also have to buy mm -hmm. and then, or the audiobook, And then I'm going <laughs> to just read and because the audiobook, the thing is, it's like, it's, it's read so slow and I can speed it up, but then it just sounds weird to me. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll, I will manage. I will make sure I get there. Um, but guys, we'll go ahead and get started because there are a lot of things to discuss and we also have, um, a lot of spoilers, but well, let's go ahead and cover what happens in chapter 23 through 27. So last we left off, um, Grace is going to the library to do some research on gargoyles and, in these chapters, this is where Amka is being really sketchy. We talked about it a little bit last week. Um, I I know that you guys are familiar with our big fan theory that Amka is going to turn out to be the person, because Tra Tracy said that there's going to be a betrayal. Um, we've had multiple different theories, but my theory is that it's going to be Amka for sure. Um, she's just acting <laughs> so sketchy. She's like, oh, you're welcome to the library. I already have all these books on gargoyles already set out for you here. Here's some drinks. Like, come on. <laughs> really? Like, I'm just, I'm sorry. I sowed the seed and yet I'm not <laughs> like, and you know, what's funny is it's just become. That's just become the theory. I keep seeing it in both of the Crave groups, the Wolf Pack and just the, the yep. normal Crave group on Facebook. Everybody talks about it now. I'm like, did we start this? This I think we did, but I think that they're going to be even more convinced by my new theory. <laughs> oh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll save that for the end because Amber has a novel written in our notes, I see, on the yep. screen. It is huge. Uh, um, I had to send a, like a scrolling screenshot to you. It's like, just yeah. said, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, a couple quick notes about the library scene. First of all, magical database. Anka says that she has mm -hmm. a computer, the laptop set up for Grace, and it's already open to the magical database. Um, I'm picturing this, like, like my husband was, um, in the military and they had like their own, like, you know, their own top secret database. And I'm wondering like, do you, who defends this? Like who, who sets this up? How is it like the dark web? Like what, what exactly is protecting this magical 
database? I don't know, because I'm, I'm imagining when I was at uni, we had a specific database and I don't remember what it was called, but it had all of the articles and dissertations and theses and everything that people had written, but weren't necessarily publicly available. But mm. you could search through that specific database and you you had to log in using your student ID um, and they paid, they, the university paid a lot of money for the students to be able to use it. And, um, Amka did say that she was logged in. So maybe she just log, logged in like that kind of thing, rather than that they were just publicly available. They just didn't, nobody, nobody human knew what the URL was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, the thing is like, I don't trust an entire school full of teenagers to not spell their passwords for this magical database that apparently is very accessible <laughs> to students. So we'll just. I've been uh, trying. I've been trying to come up with a pun, you know, because like they have had puns for other things. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I was trying to think of a pun for a search engine that's like well known, like Yahoo or Bing or Google, but like something magical. And I came up with nothing. <laughs> and I was so disappointed in myself. <laughs> Tracy was probably trying to think of something too. Sorry if you guys hear oh, a cat uh, meowing. <laughs> my cat is just screaming for my attention right now. Um have okay, so second question. Amber, have you ever had a LaCroix? Because she said that I Amka, haven't. Amka gives her a uh, LaCroix and a Dr. Pepper and she's eating m and So LaCroix, have you had flavored seltzer water like Perrier? Uh, I did at your house. Waterloo. You took a drink of it and we're like, right? That was foul. Yeah. Tasted okay. like chalk. Okay. So um, sel- I, I'm big on flavored seltzers. However, you do not mix a sel- an unsweetened like flavored seltzer with a sweet food you can't do that because there's you can kind of trick your brain into thinking that the LaCroix is sweet even though it isn't just because it has the flavor of a fruit like your brain can fill in the sweet but if you're also eating something sweet it's like the toothpaste drinking orange juice effect like (laughs) it it just it makes the LaCroix taste like poop so um Oh, um, there, there was me coming up with a theory like she was eating polos and Coca-Cola and just having <laughs> and a like nuclear reaction inside of her stomach. It's like, no. Oh, that's why things happened afterwards. <laughs> no, it just tastes awful. No wonder. No wonder oh. she got body snatched by by <laughs> Hutters. Yeah. So um, Grace is doing her research and she just uh, doesn't remember doing her research. She's apparently taken lots of notes, but... She, really good notes too. Really, yeah, apparently they're really good notes. But then she wakes up in the middle of a giant pentagram with candles all around her and doesn't know how the heck she got there. But Uncle Finn is there and Macy is there and Amka is there, which Amber pointed out last week, and Jackson is there. And it's yep. a, it, it's what <sighs> Amka, first of all, I, I I'm I'm a little suspicious because after the casting room, which, by the way, that sounds like something inappropriate. Um, <laughs> hey, baby, want to go to the casting room? Um, they decide to go back to the library to watch the footage of Grace apparently walking up to Amka, saying something to her, and then walking out of the library. Because Amka, like, goes and unlocks the case that has the 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 is it a sword or a dagger it's an atomy which i didn't really know what that was so but i'm imagining that it's a dagger i think it is like otherwise a dagger. He, like you wouldn't really be able to hide yeah a sword it's like a ceremonial dagger um like what Lori's laboratory makes have you seen hers? She makes them. Yeah, yeah, like that. We could That's... ask whether we could borrow. Could we borrow some photos of her stuff? And as long as we tag her, I'll just buy one. Because I'll, I'll buy one from her. <laughs> I just need what to find. S- s- <laughs> yeah, send her like the like excerpt that like says what it looks like, and see whether she can make one. Yeah, because there's a moon. What a moonstone. That's why. That's why they needed it. Was because there's a moonstone in the help. Yes. You think so? I think so. I think so. Yeah. But um yeah, so Amka goes unlocks the case in the footage and just walks out of the library. Um mm-hmm. 
Okay. Where does she go after that? She goes to her cottage because um, Hudson manages to convince her that she has a headache. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're right. You're right. Um, <laughs> so after all this, there's the big revelation. Jackson figures it out. Grace figures it out, but can't say the word. She asks Jackson to say it. And Jackson does the big reveal um, where he basically okay. says that the reason <laughs> that we haven't been able to find Hudson is because Hudson is inside you. And I'm just like, he, 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 he. <laughs> we're such children. Yeah. <laughs> like boobies. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Grace is like, what about me? What can I do? And everybody's just like, no, Grace, you're fine, sweetie. You you just, we'll take care you of You do this. you. Yeah. You, no. you eat your M&Ms. Yeah, you eat I your M&Ms. You save the world. You sit right over here and we'll take care of it. Yeah, that's if, if there if there's chaos, if there's destruction, I need to know how I can help. I cannot sit mm -hmm. idly by and wonder. I also liked the um the part where she was really starting to have a panic attack and Macy goes to reach for her and she's like, no, no, nope. no, no, no. Yeah. Stop. And and Amka's like, before we panic, and she's like, no offense, not to be rude, but I'm already panicking. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. So going back to the casting room, how would you feel if you woke up in the middle of a pentagram? Um, in like what she referred to as Dungeons R Us with black and red candles dripping everywhere. Um, you know, I'm I'm a little bit of a freak, so you'd be turned on. I, I'd you know, I mean, I might, I've I've got I've got weird things in my house. I've got I've got like <laughs> weird taxidermy and strange creepy things laying around I, i'm it just sounds like a normal stroll through Tuesday the Moore night. house <laughs> <laughs> see me i am still and I, and I, and it sounds really um really silly but i am absolutely terrified of witches like if if like the moment that somebody goes let's get a ouija board out uh, i'd be like i'm out and i'm away <laughs> i don't believe in any of it and yet, I'm like, yeah, but I'm still not willing to like to tempt fate. Just just because I don't believe in it doesn't mean that I still wouldn't err on the side of caution and not do any of it. Um, I don't believe in ghosts because if that many people in the world have died and left remnants of themselves and ghosts are real, why haven't I seen one? Well, yeah, and, like, there's always the meme about, like, why are all the ghosts, like, from the 18th century, whereas, like, the <laughs> mid-2000s, it's Britney, bitch, like, where are those yeah. ghosts at? But, no, I, I get that. I think that, here's my thing, my grandma, um, she was super duper into, like, witchcraft in the in the 80s and i think that it's just because it was like the taboo thing she also owned a bar she listened to like you know like metal and uh, this is my grandma like <laughs> weird grandma but um yeah i think that because it was like the really back then it was still very very much taboo that was the thing that she gravitated towards so it's never been weird to me but it hasn't been like um it hasn't been so much as like a lifestyle thing more as it's been an aesthetic thing. Like I totally mm -hmm. jive with the aesthetics. I totally, you, you've seen my house. Like I've got the crystal themed bathroom with all the gemstones and I've got the crazy like apothecary office upstairs with the old yep. vintage creepy taxidermy. Like I'm all for it. Um, but it's not like, it's not a lifestyle. I'm kind of, I'm a poser in that I'm stealing the aesthetic when it's not. <laughs> but I have plenty of friends who are very serious about it and who I've talked to. So I feel that I'm educated enough to understand just like I am with any religion that I don't personally um, identify well, that, that's, with. That's my point is yeah. that if it's a religion and if these people have like studied it and, and educated themselves on it and they believe in it and they know the dangers of it, then they do, they do them like you go, you go girl. But it's the people that go into it naively and thinking that it's funny 
are the ones that are always in those documentaries where they're tortured by ghosts for the, the rest of their life. The, sum- and the slumber I party don't want to be that person. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be that person. Um, so if somebody's like, oh, let's, let's go and, and uh, go and visit a haunted house, I'll be like, mm, you can. I will stay here because that's not my idea of fun. Oh, man, I was totally one of those kids. Like, <laughs> we went everywhere haunted. Like, there, there's, I told you about the bakery in my hometown where they found, like, the bodies of two little girls back there. But, man, you know me as a teenager. I was back there poking around in the middle of the <laughs> night with a flashlight. Hello! Like, me and a group of friends. And then, like, a bird would fly out of a bush and we'd all scream and run out of there. Um, I really had to, um, like, dampen down my fear because I grew up in a very terrible terrible household where like they put the fear of god in me and they were like anything a cult is bad and things will come and get you in the middle of the night and and yeah demons are real and all this um and i really used to get really scared whenever like a ghost program came on or a movie about ghosts or whatever so i had to as a teenager as soon as i was an adult and realizing that i was on my own and i could choose what i wanted to watch I would force myself to watch like ghost adventures and now I laugh at them. Well, yeah, because they're absurd I can see how now. Tele- yeah. How yeah, but I was, I would shake, I would shake watching them because my brain is like, but what if this is real? How, how terrifying would it be to be in the middle of this house that they have no idea where they're going. They don't have like an insular map of the place because they, they don't own that house. It's in the pitch black. All they've got is their camera lights to work from. But now I look at it and go, really? You spent eight hours in this house. You've got the best equipment ever. And all you got was. Yeah. Yeah. And that didn't even sound like. And then, and then the way that they were like, the way they clearly said. And I'm like, no, they didn't. They didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah. And that was like one of the things that you brought up because we're big like in America on the Bigfoot hunting and the monster mm-hmm. hunting. And, the, and you you were like, they spend all this time looking for Bigfoot. They don't even find them. And they've got like six <laughs> seasons of this TV show. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And, well, and if, if you recall, um, I won't say who said it, but somebody did mention in Crush that there apparently are ghosts at Catmere Academy, which I think could be its entire own book. We could, the ghosts yeah. of Catmere. It's, and... There is a uh, a bit where there she's talking about Cole, um, in Covet. She's talking about Cole, and he gets um, moved to a different school. Oh yeah, the delinquent school. Yeah, yeah. I saw someone. And I'm say like, that I that. want to spin off of that. Yeah, that could be its own book. Yes, um, Tracy, come on. You taking notes, Tracy? You're taking. You're taking too slow. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, t- several books in a year. Too slow. Yeah, too slow. Too slow. Come on. There, There is. Because I feel like it's very much like Harry Potter. It's that it is turned into such a world that is so ripe for expansion that it could be a lifetime of writing for her. And I just hope that she's ready for it. However, if it's a lifetime of writing for her, it also means it's a lifetime of podcasts for us. <laughs> I don't know about that. I like doing these guys. I I really, really do. However, do I want to commit my entire life to it until I'm a little withered I old lady? I don't want to be a I don't want to be a seventy year old lady going and talking about teenage fan fiction. <laughs> yeah, there might be a point where we decide that. Or you know, maybe if, we do. <laughs> I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe the podcast will completely blow up. I think we've got like over seven thousand downloads now, so that's not too mm-hmm. shabby. But guys, tell your friends. You know, keep 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 pimping out the podcast because you never know if it gets big. If we if Crave gets a movie, I can see this podcast just blowing up and and even because they're evergreen like you can listen to these anytime and then maybe just and then maybe we, we just get random messages of a garlic and a mushroom emoji to one and we were like what is this about i'm really confused yeah when we're old or a, or a crab and they'll just send a crab emoji and we're so far gone in the series that we don't even know what it's on about anymore yeah because people are listening for the first time it'll be amazing let's see so Back to back to the subject. Yes. So, um, when everyone was stood around Grace and she, they were trying to wake her up in the casting tower. Did you think she was turning to stone like slowly, or was stone and had to be woken back up again? Because that that was how I was reading it. Was like she, she like, was... her throat was dry and her eyes were really struggling to wake like open? Um, 
like like she was almost like petrified um yeah because it also happened the day after she was like wake, uh, the waking up in the blood incident she also really struggled to wake up and i thought oh it was it because she was so still she was turning to stone i and, was uh, yeah I can't. <laughs> no i was i was more just thinking that like she was having trouble regaining control of her own brain again mm. after it had been you know taken over yeah because i was like i was like maybe thinking that first the for the first read through up until that point i thought oh maybe just gargoyles aren't mourning people yeah i mean that's... they just struggle to wake up because <laughs> they've been still all night and now they're stone <laughs> Let's see. Uh, and then the the last the last thing was that um, Jackson says rather naively that like Hudson can't use grace against him, and I was like, "You're an idiot." There is so many ways that he could use grace against him. Maybe it was like a it was like a wishful thinking, like he's he's gonna yeah. say it, but but the thing is, by saying that, it's almost giving Hudson the idea yeah he's just putting it out there into the world yeah yeah like he could hold her hostage he could um you like use persuasion on other people and make grace's life like really like terrifying he could break up with jackson via grace yeah and just like upset him like uh he could just flat out make her ignore him there is like he has the most power in this dynamic and he then could, jackson's like yeah she he can't use you against me and you're like you're an idiot why did you say that you jinxed it he could use her to like murder everybody at the school if he wanted to mm -hmm. and just leave jackson as the last man standing yeah that was really dumb that was and then she comes out with that mind-blowing comment where she's like do you not think that he's already done this because i don't know about you but the fact that i can't kiss you says uh speaking speaking terms to me is uh i don't i can't even come up with a sentence right now because i'm so i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited for court tomorrow and i'm like just like can't stop thinking about it um yeah she she says do you not do you not think that the reason why she can't stomach being able to kiss him could be down to hudson is it like one of those moments where it dawns yeah. on him where he's like, oh, oh that's why. Shit. All this time I just thought that my breath stunk. <laughs> there is even a moment, I think, in those chapters where she wants to go and kiss him and then just goes, uh, yeah, but my goggle won't let me. Yeah, I'm not even She doesn't try. even try. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wow, she really doesn't find him sexually attractive anymore. That's fine. I because don't either. Otherwise, <laughs> because you would try, even if you go, like, it's like, oh, I want to kiss you, but my parents won't let me. You still try and do it. Right. You go out of your way to kind of rebel against it. And if, and if it backfires, it backfires. But if you've got the feelings behind the kiss, then you're going to try and do it no matter whether you're allowed to do it or somebody else disapproves or not. Like, you still do it. Unless. And she didn't. <laughs> Unless you have the guy's brother in your head watching everything. <laughs> Swaying your... Yeah. It's always the brother. And the, yeah. All right. God damn it. We're... Let's move into spoilers. Yeah, I know. You're so excited. We're at the 30 minute I mark, have... so that works out perfect. I kind of want to... I want to do a word count whilst you, whilst you introduce us. Oh, for this... Okay. Um... Well, while we're doing that, uh, guys, make sure that if you have not read past, uh, what was the last chapter that I said? Well, actually, if you haven't read the full series, because we're going to have court spoilers as well. So if you ha haven't read the full series, you might want to back out because we've got a lot to talk about. Um, before we get started, though, let me go, because I know that most of the spoilers are yours. I purposefully didn't add a bunch because I know that <laughs> you you've got a lot. To. But let me, I'll throw my one out there because it was a fan who asked us to acknowledge it. So we have been talking about who the betrayal is. Tracy keeps hinting that there's some big betrayal that's coming. And we've been saying Amka. Um, we've also joked and said Heather, the were crab, mm -hmm. <laughs> Grace's friend who just we mysteriously hardly ever hear about. 
Uncle Phil. And the blood letter. But I feel like that wouldn't be so much of a betrayal. As Does it, that make sense? Like a fate and destiny type thing instead. Yeah, like, I mean, it, it would be a betrayal for Jackson because he did get raised by her and he kind of defends her kind of like a mother. But at the same time, if if the blood letter betrayed them all, they'd be like, well... Yeah, who, who kind of was expecting anything different, really? <laughs> right. That, that's not a shocker, and I think that Tracy's going to throw us a, a showstopper. Yeah. But someone said it's Mackay, and I'm like, okay, that he's what? what? But then she's like, you know, Cyrus is paying for him to go to school at Catmere, which I didn't even know mm-hmm. that it costs anything to go to Catmere. Who's paying for Grace anyway? <laughs> um, and then you know, as I've been reading. Makai, there's been a couple scenes where he's not there. Everybody else has been there, but he's been doing something else. And then he's the only one who gets really, really hurt when everyone's on their way to go to the unkillable beast and Grace heals his neck where his neck gets cut open by the um, the circle's the guards. Yeah, his neck gets cut open and she kind of puts gargoyle essence in his neck wound and seals it shut with stone that sounds so disgusting yeah it's kind (laughs) of but and he wasn't there for the unkillable beast battle either now i haven't got and he also wasn't like he's always part of that like little team until he's not but you don't remember that he exists he's always like you also when he appears, he's always like, you're always happy that he's there. But there are a lot of times when he isn't there. And now and it, absol- it absolutely is also said that it's not, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Byron. From Twilight. From uh, Twilight. What's his name? Uh, uh, from Twilight. Uh, um, mm, Jasper. It, it's not Jasper uh, powers. He has the power of hypnosis. Because mm. it said once they leave Mackay because he got injured, they all get on flint and start flying towards the Unkillable Beast's island. And she said that it's a shame that Mackay couldn't come with them because he was going to help them with hypnosis, uh, hypnotizing the Unkillable Beast. And there are a lot of times when Grace and him are alone. Yep. Because he's Jackson's like little second in command you know that jackson always sends him on the errands i don't know that i will be really Mm. upset like i I, i'm just saying that i i hope it's amka but i've got it in the back of my head now like every time i'm reading Mm. i'm like you and i'm gonna feel if it it was i feel like it was a manipulative way he had to betray them if he was betraying them it was because somebody had something over him i don't think that he is himself someone that is dodgy yeah i'm not sure like if he if he, okay. if he does do it it's because somebody else has manipulated him into doing it i don't because when he ever like he gives grace uh the jacket for example in this yeah these past chapters and stuff it's no it's she would notice if it wasn't a genuine smile or a genuine interaction um kind of like flint like you knew that he was a good guy deep down it was just that his circumstances made him feel like that was his only option yeah yeah well i guess um i guess we'll find out i'm my my i i don't want this one to be true um i i have had the theory that jackson is gonna turn evil and evil. have like insane power because he's got Nuri's dragon heart and then there's going to be like a complete like twist where he actually ends up fulfilling what Hudson was supposed to be to Cyrus being the you know the world yeah, ender. I also have kind of theories about that as well because every single like ancient who has spoken to Grace has told a story of their always needing to be balanced and the fact that there are brothers that are always at odds with each other. I feel like the peace or the friendship won't be very long lasting and it it wouldn't even be because Jackson wants to be evil. It's that the universe demands balance 
and it makes me very uncomfortable and yeah and all the quotes that the I mean, I'm, I'm piecing together like breadcrumbs with the quotes that we've been getting from, because Tracy's sharing quotes and Entangled Teen yep. is sharing different quotes. And I've been piecing them together. And Hudson seems very mentally tortured in mm-hmm. all of these quotes. And I'm just like, what the hell is going on? And I'm, I'm, I'm so nervous. But um, let's go ahead. The, that's the Mackay theory was my only one. Let's go ahead and get into your insane string of events that that you've got because i have a feeling that this is going to blow my mind and i'm not even going to read it i'm going to like look away from the screen oh you haven't read them no i wanted you to present oh, them. oh god oh no i hope i don't break your heart <laughs> oh no okay I, I, do it do it fast okay. pull the band-aid so, off so let's do the the spoiler things from these chapters specifically okay um so there are three dozen books that have been picked out by amka about for... gargoyles yeah, about gargoyles. So there's like okay. 36 odd books full of research and information on gargoyles. And Grace never reads any of them. Um, she like Hudson makes notes on them, but he can't possibly have read 36 books in an hour. So this research has now been burned. They're, and they don't think that they're going to be able to ever find that information again. And I feel a little bit like, oh no, because that might have been the only book in existence. Like the those books were like curated by Amka specifically, and now they're gone. Wait, they um, were. Why are they gone? The whole school is on fire. <gasps> oh, you, you're, you're. Wait, the school's not on. Yeah, the school is. Yes, on it is. Oh, is it on it fire? Is. Because I, I finished cover last night, and the school is on fire, oh. and everything is gone. The only person that was left was Maurice. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. So any information that Grace could have used is, is, is gone. And also she never worked out what her powers were as a gargoyle. So she wouldn't be able to work out what surplus power she has to be able to work out what else she is as well. Because through process of elimination, she would have been able to go, okay, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Which of these are always told as something that a gargoyle can do? And also, which one is the odd one out? Which one is the special power that no one really knows where that's come from? And now she's got no research to do and also no time because they are literally now in an all out war. When is she going to find the time to do anything? So she's completely in the dark. The only person that knows anything about it is Hudson. And all he did was like an hour of research. Other than Abka, who clearly knows. Who is gone. And who is gone. But she clearly knows. Mm-hmm. Because she was able to, she she was kind of teasing things to Grace, but was not giving her straight answers. And she's like, you'll find out soon enough. Like, yeah. And okay. Grace never like took down the titles of the books or 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 anything. And I'm sure that they're not going to be a book specifically about gargoyles. They're going to be reference books about a lot more other things. So she would never be able to just search for books about gargoyles. But yeah, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed that no one did the research. And she's always telling people how annoyed she is that they don't like they don't tell her things that they keep her in the dark that they they think that she's not worth telling the information to and she gets annoyed that she's always on the back foot and i'm like that's the one thing that you should have done is research yourself and she's always surprised at what she can do as well (laughs) yeah like did you know you could fly she's like what did Did you you know that you could crumble bits of rock into people and save them what (laughs) yeah now, now so I, yeah. All right. So that's number one. Okay. Uh, num- number two, I was like, do you think that Hudson was accidentally draining Grace before he realized that he could do it? Or was he draining Jackson through the mating bond the whole time? I th- Well, maybe that's why she's so tired after he completely mm. took over her body. Because it's only been two nights since she's come back. When did we first start hearing about Jackson saying that he was like looking as soon as soon as um 
Hudson becomes a person in her head, like that she can see him, ta uh, tangible. Mm -hmm. And it takes her a very long time to work out that Hudson is draining him as well. Yeah, because Hudson knows all along now. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, know, I was he... wondering whether that was the reason why she was also kind of gargoyling or struggling to wake up was because he was draining her. He was siphoning off her energy and he wouldn't have ever done that deliberately. But he was requiring a lot of power to take over. Maybe and maybe that's why she was like in such a deep sleep was she was recovering mm -hmm. from that yeah because he wouldn't he wouldn't do that to her intentionally he wouldn't no. like, he wouldn't drain her event because he was already so concerned when she was giving energy to jackson he was getting like super pissed off yeah. at her so okay yeah um and then i was like why was her blazer ripped because that was never addressed um and if hudson knew that he needed more items to like continue with the spell because he does he he knows within the blood letters cave he knows exactly what the spell is and what items that they need the like north south east west thing yeah um and if so why wh what was he trying to do in the casting tower with just the atome and um grace doesn't wake up with it he's already stashed it away <laughs> you're right it's in her bedroom in the closet on the shelf so why is she in the casting tower? Um, ominous spookies, unless mm -hmm. um, with Amka. <laughs> well, Hudson would know, though. He would. He would have told her if he, he not if not if whatever Amka can do removes both of them because they are the same person. They were sharing the same thoughts. Like whatever spell affects Grace would also affect. Hudson. Yeah, but Hudson also isn't asking any questions. He's like, why did we wake up here? Like, what? I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. I'm I not don't sure. know. That one, I feel like waking up in the casting tower might be one of those things just to get us on edge. Like, that's one mm -hmm. of those things that Tracy might have thrown in just to be ominous. Um, and it kind of made sense with the idea that he still had the, uh, the Atome, but he had already put it somewhere because otherwise she would have gone like, why do I have a knife? Right, a knife and I'm up in the middle of the And pentagram. she'd give it back to Amka. She was like, well, take this away from me. I don't want it. Right. Yeah. Mm. So now right. we are on my cover. I have finished everything. Okay. Spoilers. I'm ready. Give it to me, daddy. Okay, so there was a lot of spoilers and fan theories that Remy could be Macy's brother. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so we get to hear about the fact that Remy is one year younger than Grace, thereabouts, mm -hmm. which means that the maths just doesn't work. I thought he was older, but even so, it still wouldn't work. Um, so if Rowena went missing when Macy was nine or ten, okay. Remy would still be a parent in their household. And he was also born in the prison. So, yeah. Uh, however, he never mentions his mother's or father's name. So he could literally be anybody. Um, and he also said that his father gave him enough power to level the prison. So his father either could still be alive or is not got powers anymore. Because the way that he said it was, it was like either he imparted all of his power to Remy or passed it on through genes that he gave him enough. Unless it's I don't fin know. Finn's like illegitimate child and Finn It could be. It could be. And the way that um he speaks about his mother, he's talking about his mother being in the prison. She died when he was five. And he also remembers his birth. And Grace is like, How can you remember your birth? And he's like, I can remember my birth. Which is a really odd fact. Yeah, that doesn't sound like something that Tracy no. would have just thrown in there. No. So those are the things about Remy that like start to get okay. my suspicions started. You know, um, I, I, I like that. And, I, you know, just kind of spitballing here. And obviously I, have, I haven't made it that far into the reread. But just, just for giggles and shit, say that... Um, 
say that Finn is the father and that Remy just happens to have a different mother and this was mm -hmm. okay. What Finn doesn't has he shown any power at all? Yes. And it is he's really powerful. Finn the is? only the only time that he shows like actually like what he can do, he stops uh Nuri and Cyrus from fighting each other when During Cyrus sentences Flint to the prison. That's right. And Grace is like, oh, I knew that he was just like, he. I knew he was a warlock, but I have never seen him actually do anything. And she was like, she like recoils from his power. Okay. Okay. Um. So yeah, that was odd. And then... <sighs> Then the scene ends of the, them leaving the prison using uh, the money that they had won. Right. And they did the gladiator scene. But then Remy point blankly refuses to leave the prison because he has only seen it with a flower. He has only seen him leaving with a flower. And he also has his powers. So he technically has three ways to leave the prison. And he still doesn't leave. Uh, he is adamant that he he needs this flower, and he also has enough power to to level the prison. Um, and now I, I'm and also he has all these these discussions in front of Ka uh, Karen as well. The Charles, the guy who runs the prison, the ten year old, oh, yeah, the little brat. He has all of these conversations about how he needs to leave the prison. He's going to leave the prison, but he has seen his leaving the prison is the only eventuality is him using the flower. Why would the flower work if the the leader of the prison would watch him eat the flower, pretend to die? <laughs> mm. So I am immediately suspicious of Remy now. Aww. because Because as soon as they leave the prison... Cyrus immediately makes a move on the island and we never hear of Remy again. And Remy has three things at his disposal now. Well, if he levels the disappears. prison, say he were to level the prison, does that mean that he gets out and everybody gets crushed and dies? Or does that mean that he gets out know. and everyone is unleashed that's in the prison? I don't I don't know. And the the thing is he the only way that he shows what power he has, right? Is that he unlocks their cuffs. They're like magical cuffs. But he does it using a whirlpool of power that just like gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden their cuffs, their cuffs fall off. And I was like, I thought that the entire prison was a cuff. So if he has done it, he would have had to turn off all the layers of the prison you think that he's just in there willingly right now right is that is that yep. where you're getting at like he's I just th i think that he's in there willingly he's staying there for a specific reason and also all of the levels of protection of the prison stopping people from using their powers even if all of their cuffs still remain intact he's removed the other layers otherwise everybody wouldn't be able to have access to their power before they left because the first thing that they do is Grace like starts like finding her platinum string. Um, Flint releases some fire. So they are like, they're able to use their power before they've even left the prison. And the prison itself is a cuff. Hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't like this anymore. I Because the moment that they leave... And they, they leave with um with Calder and Vanda. And then all of a sudden, everybody comes out from the trees and says, oh, we've got a problem. Cyrus is is going to the Unkillable Beast's island. Like, he already knew that they had left the prison. Either Remy is already taken the flower and pretended to die, which doesn't make sense. Or he's watched Karen tell Cyrus that they've left, which is then, why didn't he stop him? Or he's part of it. Hmm. At the, at the same time, I've got a theory 
now that th- they would be the prison itself in exchange mm-hmm. for all those creatures' freedom. Let's say that Remy has the power to get everybody out, right? Let's just say that yeah. he has removed the, the, we'll say, like, the wards. Because there's, using... there's a lot of people that don't deserve to be in there. Yeah, so let's just say that he's removed the wards that are keeping, you know, the prison itself, turning that into a cuff. He's removed that. And that's why, every, like, Grace yeah. and everybody are able to show their powers. Now, the only thing that's bounding everybody is the actual physical cuffs that they're wearing um, mm-hmm. within the prison. And then, obviously, there's the there's the guards and everything as well that are their own, you know, beasts. Yeah. What if, in the long scheme of things, he is able to, in exchange for their freedom, offer up everyone from the prison for aid in the war Ooh. on Grace's behalf. Like, yeah. Because that would be another, like, if you didn't want it to be a sinister theory and you wanted it to go, like, a more lighthearted direction. Yeah. Because right- I've also thought of something whilst you were speaking, because I thought that you were going down one way, but actually you went down a different way. They were using Vander, the giant, mm-hmm. to make more prison cells and more cuffs than ever before because he was expecting a sudden turnout of people realizing that Cyrus was going to imprison everybody and everybody at the school has gone. (gasps) Oh, what if Remy is staying behind because he is, because he he can see the future. What if he's seen that he needs to stay behind to get the children out? That is another good theory as well, because that's going to give us, okay, so if we're talking about good storytelling, what we want is that, (laughs) We want to get to that point of desperation where, I mean, it's just Grace's little little group yep. that's left. And they think that they're going to have to fight this war all on their own. But the if we numbers want numbers are really, really skewed. This... Yeah. That the odds are just completely against them. Yep. But then at the last minute, we get that that rush of it's... Terrifying criminals. <laughs> yeah, that they, they are just on their side fighting for their, their freedom. But also yeah. getting their revenge... As getting well. like Tarzan vibes where like he's like fighting the like people on the ships on his own and then all of a sudden like the elephants come out <laughs> and the gorillas come out and I'm like I was, yeah I was, Jackson can go oh <laughs> I, I was thinking more Lord of the Rings with the ghost army sure. appearing out of nowhere which you haven't watched Lord yep. of the Rings have you yeah okay then. I'm hoping for a John Cleese on a goat <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's um so Okay, I like that theory a lot more. I like the yeah. theory that because it feels more realistic to Remy's character, especially if we're getting a Remy backstory book or a spin-off book, it's not she's not going to He can't re- be evil evil, but at the same time I was like okay, I I don't like that he stayed at the prison voluntarily and it made me feel all kinds of like it wasn't like a oh I can't wait for Remy to finally escape and and find Calder and it'll be great because I was like wait why didn't he just walk out with them why was he so adamant to keep the flower as well especially if he he had the um the idea that he had this power that he could level the prison. He still took the flower. Who is the flower for? Because it would be pointless for him. Hmm. And th- those flowers were specifically grown by the crone to essentially make you dead. Yeah. I have no idea. So, so that's that's one okay. thing. <laughs> um, and then speaking of the flowers, what is the crone going to ask for of Grace as payment for the flowers because she still owes her a favour and has the crone found a loophole in Grace's terms? Ooh, I forgot about that. Because Grace's, Grace's uh, terms were, I cannot and will not hurt anybody I love, whether indirectly or directly. And then when when the crone is says, are you sure about that? And then Grace is like, okay, I'm going to reword it in my head to make sure that there are no loopholes and then agrees. Yes, I'm happy with those terms. The crone says, okay. And now I'm like, shit, what's the crone going to ask for? Oh, her powers. 
I don't like it. I don't like this this doubt. But yeah. So that that was the other thing that whilst I was reading, it was like, oh, I don't like it when people have like things that they owe or like favors because it never comes out as a good thing. Unless it's Court of Thorns and Roses and you end up with. Yeah, but at the same time that like uh, the beast from below, I don't remember what his name is. Baraxis. Baraxis. He's still free. Yeah, he's just Roman. He's. Yep. (laughs) I mean, so (laughs) yeah. Um, so that that was the other one. Um, and then I also said the the giants, the crone, and even the enchanted forest itself said that Grace had way more power than just a gargoyle, and the forest referred to her as daughter. Yeah, and that that can be connected back to um the witch's court bonus chapter with her going into that that forest, the forest that yeah. this forest reminded her of that forest. Mm-hmm. Um and and bringing the forest, ba- bringing yep. it alive, you know, making all the flowers bloom, and basically well, this is specifically after a scene where she brings down uh, Cyrus's troops who are trying to capture her after the giant's village, mm-hmm. and she gets the trees to all kind of take part in the battle, kind of like Ents from Lord of the Rings. They right. have their like roots like smashing each other and killing all these people and and things like that. Um, and then she sees that one of the trees has been like chopped with a sword or, or, or something and she loses it. She says, not my forest. This is my forest um, and goes mental and it isn't until she realizes that like Hudson is like trying to say that's enough, like we can leave now, that's enough. She then sees that she has destroyed all these people. Um, there's blood everywhere. And um, then she passes out. But she never uses that power again. And she also doesn't refer to it again. But I was wondering whether there was a point where she she wasn't the gargoyle anymore, that she was something else, and that that is one of the powers that isn't supposed to be something that a gargoyle can do. Because she has a sudden, like, um, instinct to do it. Because um, she's flying at that point, and then she just drops to the ground and is like, come on, trees, join my battle. Yeah, because, I mean, if if we're talking about, like, typical elemental powers, like, we've already confirmed that she can control water, but this mm-hmm. is a completely separate thing yeah like she's actually talking to the trees they have a conversation because the trees say like thank you or see you later daughter or something and she's like yep the trees spoke to me but she never she never brings up the fact that she can talk to trees again Mm. so i'm wondering whether that wasn't grace at that point that she had gone to like her her alter ego kind of like where she goes into her gargoyle and her gargoyle has its own like sense of humor and her gargoyle has that sort of idea that it's slightly separate from grace i was wondering whether this thing is another alternate identity that she can tap into so she's like uh because she 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 turned into brutal like that's not grace no no Grace would like tie them up, make sure that they couldn't escape, but then leave. But th- this Grace, this version of Grace, rips people to pieces. And there's no, there's no like, there's no like remorse afterwards, right? If I do recall, like no. she's not like no. she's not stressing about the fact that it nope. just happened, and and not that she did it, because she, she she would get that anxiety that, that that happened and somebody else had done it. She didn't even have the guilt of it. Or the the need for therapy. It was just, yep. It was yeah. It was a very odd scene to read. Read back and go, oh yeah, that happened, and I don't remember it happening, and I don't remember Grace being this okay with violence ever. Because even when um, she goes in for her Ludares tournament, where she's trying to win a seat on the circle, and Cyrus says that. Everybody on the opposing team has been given like dampener cuffs so that they don't get harmed. She smiles at him because she realizes how much of an advantage that is to her because she doesn't need to hold back. So even trying to save her own life in a Ludes like tournament 
she was okay with pulling punches because she didn't want to hurt anybody. And now she's ripping people to pieces. It's different trees. because it was classmates, though. Mm. Though they were classmates she hated. It's probably very yeah. different when it's like the student body versus adults. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So that was, a, that was a scene that I forgot happened. And now I'm like, oh, I forgot. Yeah. Um, then we had the the point where I suddenly went, wait, Grace was very like high in standing with the giants when she visited them. They loved her. They wanted her to come back. They even like smuggled her out. Um, they had a feast set out for her and, and all sorts. They were very excited to see her. But has that status now changed since she killed the two in the gladiator arena? Will this backfire in the future? Could the giants have been someone important? And the feeling that we got when we were in the giants village wasn't that they were, were idiots, but Hudson referred to them as like stupid and that he wasn't going to go because of some giants. Uh, there were idiots. There were morons. That wasn't the idea of giants at all. And I'm just kind of hoping that it's not going to be like a, the giants don't like her anymore because she killed them. Um, You know, what's weird is I, I didn't even connect the two. I was thinking about the ones that, that they killed as being more like like trolls. Yeah. As opposed to like the same type but of... But they were giants. Hmm. And now I'm like, oh, because well, they had names as well. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, oh no. What if like she goes and she thinks that she could have the giants help? And they're like, And no. then she finds out that like they were somebody that they were forced to fight or that they actually were like the clan's son or something. I don't know. I'm just a bit concerned that it's going to be something that she thinks is some like all okay and dealt with, and then it comes back to bite her on the ass. You're stacking the worst odds against I our, know. our little party. But You're then I'd rather like I'm a worst case scenario person, and if the worst case scenario happens, at least I prepared for it because I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> right, okay, I can deal with this. I can deal with this because I already pre thought it. <laughs> I, I need to I need to rush through Covet because a lot of this like I remember it, but I don't yeah. remember all the fine I spent, details. I spent the entire book thinking that she got her tattoo in the giant's village, but it wasn't at all. It was not until she got into the pit. Yes. Um and then uh Remy was like, Oh yeah, by the way, you get a tattoo. And she's like, What? <laughs> yeah, because Hudson was flirting on her with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh yeah. Um, and then speaking of giants again, we watch Vanda create a portal in a redwood tree using earth magic to leave. So he left the prison and then they were like, how are we going to get you home? Because they realized that Flint was no way going to be able to carry a giant. And he was like, oh, it's okay. And then just opens a door in a tree and walks through it. And I'm like, is this something that Grace can do? What? If so, that's cool as shit. It sure would have been useful a long time ago. I know. I mean, she can call trees to start ripping people apart with their roots. So I'm kind of hoping that she's able to just go, can you make me a door? I mean, how different would it be from what, what Macy mm -hmm. can do? It's just yeah. she would need a, a tree. Maybe maybe a specific yeah. tree. Maybe specifically a redwood. But still, redwoods are huge. They're, they're I'm just kind of foreshadowing that Macy might get hurt or knocked out or something and they need to make a quick escape. And then all of a sudden that like memory to Grace will be like, <gasps> wait, maybe I can do this. And it'll be like a Hail Mary to get them out. All right. Yep. Uh, then I've got some Jackson theories. <laughs> evil Jackson, evil so, Jackson. Uh, well, so I said Jackson can feel his soul again. Once Neri gave him her heart, mm -hmm. Flint, Flint and Jackson touched for the very first time when they were grieving over Luca together, because it wasn't just Flint that lost Luca. Luca was was one of Jackson's, uh, not circle, order the order. He was one of their his order, so that they were both grieving. Um, nothing foreshadowed a bond being created, but I was thinking like you don't just suddenly create a bond if your emotions aren't ready for it. So I was thinking maybe they both need to like grieve. Um, and whilst we were reading, I was sending a lot of screenshots to Starla of Jackson being 
not so hetero. <laughs> Oh yeah, we the, now I'm seeing it all over the place. Like I Oh yeah. reading reading Crush, it was multiple times where he's given Flint looks. He's mm-hmm. looking at Flint. Flint's shirt gets burned off and and Jackson his abs. Yeah, Jackson's eye in his abs and then Grace calls him on it and he's like I, I, I no, I wasn't. I, and I thought that that was just him being like, you know, typical Petra. Yeah, typical dude trying to be like, "No, no, I'm not I'm not gay." Like, you know how how dudes can no, be. No, he was but, definitely interested. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now that you reread it, he is absolutely like on multiple occasions kind of flirted with Flint, given Flint looks. Yeah. Mhm. No, I I'm, um, I'm all for that. And there is even a point of like jealousy over flint and he's ready to murder luca with his eyes and um i thought about it but maybe it doesn't make quite sense i think maybe he was just jealous anyway but there is a point where luca comes back from the dragon court and says that they can't leave because he still can't go out in sunlight which gives like the okay we know why they can't leave before sunlight which means that he's been drinking human blood and then i was like maybe he's put two and two together and i was like no wait Flint's not human, so does that count? I think so. Otherwise, okay, why would so, we have gotten yeah. that? I don't know because the dragons were feeding them human blood in flasks. Oh, okay. Which is why I was like, oh, maybe that's that doesn't count. But still, like Jackson was ready to murder Luca. Like he was really angry at specifically Luca for saying that they had to either be back before sunrise or couldn't leave until sunset. And I was like, maybe he's put like two and two together and is really angry that he's been drinking his boy. <laughs> well, that would be my hope. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was very excited by the fact that it it was very romantic between them, despite the fact that we hadn't really noticed it in the first read through i wonder if um i wonder if we'll get at the beginning of court like i don't know if it's like that on your version but the beginning of covet did you get the little warning yes okay and we texted each other with it yeah we were like oh i can't wait to to get one of those with court that's the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna open it and Mm. see if there's a warning okay keep keep going um so the other thing was that grace gets given a rune by uncle finn it's like a little pebble with a rune for self-preservation or protection or something like that for safety. Um, and she has it on her graduation day and she has it all of like three hours before she then gets arrested. She puts it back into Uncle Finn's pocket when she says goodbye and says, give it to Jackson. Jackson needs it. But then that's the last thing we hear about it. Oh. I'm wondering whether Jackson ever got that stone and I'm wondering whether that actually had any power or whether it was kind of like a talisman like a lucky rabbit foot or or something but that doesn't really fit the theme of these books where magic is real why would why would uncle finn give her something saying that it offers protection if it was just a silly like placebo stone right especially with Um, the stakes so high yeah um and he gave it to her on her graduation because he knew that Hudson's protection was running out of time because as soon as they weren't students anymore, he was fair game. Um, so he knew that Grace was was going to need it. But he said that it's part of a full set left to her by her father. So somewhere in this world is a full set of magical stones with runes on that Grace can use. And she hasn't shown Macy. And I'm wondering whether like... Jackson still has it because if Uncle Finn never managed to give it to Jackson, then it's gone because Uncle Finn has disappeared. Maybe in the Athe, whatever it is, prison. Ethereum. Had Ethereum. Um, where Remy might be able to rescue him and then meet his dad. Oh, I'm thinking about all the stones and what if it's one of those things mm. where like they, 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 will come upon the rest of the collection but then that one is missing (laughs) yeah i'm just wondering like what powers could these stones have because uncle finn wouldn't have given them if they were like kind of like sugar water or sugar pill like they actually had power 
And I'm wondering either did Jackson get it? If so, it did a really piss poor job of protecting him because he got the eternal bite. Or maybe it did work because to, despite that, he still survived. Did it work? It doesn't sound like it worked. No. But yeah, and I'm like, okay, so if he doesn't have it, where is it? Well, if Finn has it, maybe that's maybe that's a better case. Because Jackson ends mm -hmm. up being fine. Maybe Finn's the yeah. one who really needs it. <laughs> maybe Finn has it, and that's the reason why he's still alive. Definitely still alive, because he's got a magical stone. Um, but if you think about it, uh, Flint, Grace, and Hudson get arrested... And they are only in the Ethereum for six days. And between that time, they think that the battle on the island was a, like, uh, what's the word? Distraction. Yeah, to draw them away. To draw them away. So they think, okay, well, that ha the, the siege of Katmere happened whilst they were in the island. So... Flint, Uncle Finn had six days to give it to to Jackson. So I'm hoping, hoping somewhere that this stone is really important, or it could be like Grace's necklace and never be mentioned again. Well, I, I did catch in in Crush it was mentioned that she was wearing it because she said I hadn't taken it off, and that's the last time we hear about it. She's like she brings okay. it up, but it, apparently she keeps it tucked into her clothes, and then we never hear about it again. <laughs> Um, and then there are one, there's one final one and it's a, a lot of people are trying to kind of shoehorn in these ancient sisters into who they are, whether they're the blood letter, whether they're Macy's mom, um, these two ancient sisters that were torn in, that told in the creation story that was told by the crone that there are two unbelievably magical, powerful demigods somewhere. Right. Um, but within the creation story, the mother was also mentioned. And the mother is the one that created gargoyles in order to restore balance. But apparently, as soon as gargoyles have restored balance, she's going to take them off to her own world. I was, I'm really, I was like, oh, wait, so... Grace manages to achieve things. She's, gonna she's just going to go poof. She's going to be taken to another world. She's going to be taken to her, her wherever the gods live. Well, that would... Because she's fulfilled her duty. Well, they've, they've already... We've already had a lot of people speculate that Grace is like a demigod. Mm-hmm. And that, that Macy's mom is like a demigod. Yep. We've had that that theory tossed at us as well. But yeah, we have to kind of sh put identities to three people. So there's the mother, the person who created Gargoyles, who I'm thinking might be um, Grace's Emerald String. Oh. Rather than either of the two sisters, because the two sisters had nothing to do with Gargoyles. The two sisters were at odds with each other because one created paranormals and one created humans. And then they were always in um, conflict with each other because neither of them could find the balance between who was predator, who was prey kind of thing. Um, and then the mother said that she like kind of evicted them and sent them down to earth to live as demigods. So she made them fall uh, in order to sort their shit out. And she also created gargoyles in order to try and create balance between the two sisters and said that she was going to bring them back home the moment that balance was restored. Mm. Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned. I wish I had something <laughs> insightful to add. I wish, yeah. I, I, wish the... I was like, I wish I had made it through Covet before this episode. <laughs> Well, like the, re the reason like, why I blasted I, through I it, I know all these I'll... things, but I can't come up with yeah. any additional conclusions because I wasn't able to pick up more like pebbles mm. of information along the way. 
So the reason why I blasted through it was because I was, I, it wasn't just, oh, I need to have it done before court. It was, I wanted to put all of my theories out there, you know, like, a, right. like I want to put them out there so that pe- I can put them in an envelope so that I can say that they happened before people get caught and think that I cheated the system. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny is this episode's going to air after court's already been out for two days. Well, for the record, it was 1726 PM UK time on two- Monday, Monday, the 31st of January of January. This- there you go. I've put my pin in it. These are my theories. If they are wrong, I will be happy. And if they are right, then, 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 then. Because this episode will air on Wednesday the 2nd. So everyone will have had yes. court for two days. And many people, I'm sure, will have finished it. Though that's a <laughs> lot of pages to finish in two days. So, yeah. And I, just a, a quick warning to anybody who is reading court, please don't post in any of the facebook groups i'm staying they offline. have all they have all put a like month ban on anything that is court related yeah i think so yeah don't don't post anything and please don't ruin it for anybody else i know that you're going to be absolutely screaming to speak about it with other people listen to the podcast but, that'll be your your yeah. opportunity to to hear it but I'm going to stay off. Like, Crave Series Aesthetic mm-hmm. is probably going to have a dark week. Um, yeah. Because I we know might that if do, I like, get on Wingo the page, Wednesday. you guys are probably going to message us. You guys are probably going to tag us and things yeah. and post things. I don't want to see any of it. So if you nope. notice that Crave Series Aesthetic on Instagram is dark next week, just know that it is us rushing through court so that nothing is spoiled for us, but so we can also <laughs> prepare for next week's episode, which will air on – hold on a minute – Wednesday the My mouth is sixth. all the way across the screen. What day what day is next week's podcast? Ninth. The ninth. The ninth is when it'll air. Okay. So on the ninth, we will have our court episode. And, and like I said, guys, this is just gonna be us. Amber and I aren't gonna speak about the book the entire time that we're reading it. We're gonna finish it by the ninth. We're gonna sit down together. We're gonna record the podcast. That'll be our first time talking about it. And that'll be, this is gonna be our area where we aren't gonna have like a spoiler-free zone. It's all gonna be spoilers. So if you have not been able to finish court by the time next week's episode airs, wait to listen to it. Because I have a feeling- Skip skip next week because we will go back to Crush the following week after and we will try our absolute best to not include court spoilers until the howl again as usual. But next week, everybody's going to be in exactly the same boat as us. They've either devoured it or they're like halfway through it and they need someone to discuss it with. We are going to try and be those people. Exactly. We'll be, we know that the groups don't want anyone talking about it and it's rude Mm -hmm. to do it on, on Instagram or anywhere, you know, but this is going to be our nice closed little safe space where if you finish it in time, listen to the podcast. And I'm thinking, um, a lot of people, we had our last giveaway winner. She posted a really cute, um, photo shoot that she did where she cosplayed Macy and Grace, but she wore her Lou Dares hoodie. Um, I (laughs) don't think I can afford to do another like big hundred dollar giveaway, um, but next week, maybe we could give away a, a hoodie during the court episode. Yeah. Just a hoodie. Yeah. You want to do that? Okay. So next week we'll, uh, we'll do a, uh, one of the Lou Dares coach hoodie giveaways as well. We'll start the giveaway and we'll tell you guys how to enter. And that'll be like a fun little extra that we can do. I also, during my, my reread, um, I was thinking about Eden. She's got the purple hoodie that says for the horde on it. I'm like, we should do that one as well and put dragon wings on the back. Yes. That'd be a fun one. Yes. I'm sure that. And any, any of Macy's stickers as well. I also think would probably be a good like t-shirt design. That'd be fun. (laughs) All right. So we've got, um, fan polls and fan questions, all court themed because we know everybody's super duper excited. Um, I'll go ahead and get them pulled up if you want to ask the questions since I've already got them up on screen. Yes. So question number one is, will you save a court or race through it? Starla, <laughs> which one will you? <laughs> well, I bet you're, you're going to be a saver it, but at the speediest manner you possibly can. <laughs> I don't have a choice but to race through mm-hmm. it because of the podcast and our influence and me. in the crave. I'm going to be very, I'm going to be very angry yeah. if you take your goddamn time. <laughs> yeah. And Amber, who speed reads 
Yeah. Um, I, and I know that you're going to race through it too, but what do you think the audience said? I think that people are going to say that they're going to race through it. And I think it's because it has been so long since they knew it was going to be released. It's not just a, like it's been like teased to be released in February this whole time. It was teased to release in November. We've been so edging. people were ready. Yeah. <laughs> The delayed gratification uh, is going to be crazy. And the fact that we were ready for it in November and we had to then still wait for it another two months, I think is going to be very evident in the way that people read it. Yeah. Well, 65%. And the, oh, and the spoilers. And the spoilers that Tracy's been posting, I think, makes it worse. Yeah, because a lot of them have been very indescript. Mm -hmm. And some of them have been very I mean, descript, so that's what makes. I it didn't hard. get anything like that, like for the like the final Harry Potter book or anything like that, which was probably one of the biggest book releases ever. That and Breaking Dawn, those two were yeah. like people flipping out. Yeah, even for those, we didn't get quote spoilers. No, no, social media has made things so much better. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm I'm um, thinking that right, yeah, it, it would be race. crazy. 35% say savor it slow. Those equal out to 80 people said race 60 or I'm sorry, 80, uh, 80 people said race and 43 votes for, for reading it slow. So, oh. all right. And do you want to read I'm the with next you. one? This is the one that I was most <laughs> excited about. Question is, who do you think will betray grace in court? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you went, you went quiet for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I read the question, so it says, who do you think will betray Grace in court? Well, you already, our, our whole episode has been about that. So, um, obviously we think I, Amka. I, I think Amka. I, I, I did think Remy for a while, but now I, I have come to the better conclusion that he is warlocking his idea into staying in the prison to rescue either someone specific, everyone, all the children and is going to meet his dad, Uncle Finn. Maybe. Okay. What is he? You definitely are Amka, Team Amka. Team Amka, all the way. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm floored by these responses. I'm, oh, okay. Um, I'm nervous now. They're so, they're so Who's, different. Are there, are there, are there any Amkas? Um, uh, are we alone in our amkinness? No, there's, but that's not a majority. Wow, you guys, oh. you guys are awful. Okay, <laughs> let me start from the beginning. Um, we've got a lot for Jackson. Okay. Um, one one person said the unkillable beast, which I don't think so. I think he, I mean, if he was to betray them, it's because he has his mind completely meddled with. Like, yeah, he was very confused he's he's noodle brains right now if he does it it's gonna be like a, he's he doesn't know what he's doing one person said wait what did i miss something why do we think someone will betray her? oh no <laughs> um, oh no i feel bad now someone said hudson you're wrong um oh. I better not let's see um someone said i feel like it could be Mackay just because cyrus is paying for his school and that's kind of sus uh-huh uh, one person said, what about the blood letter turning her back on everyone and is working for Cyrus? Um, she's not turning her back on anybody. She turned her back on them deliberately because she's a bitch. Yeah, she's she's been suspicious from the beginning. But I think that that's part of, like, you're supposed to point blame at her. And I don't think it's going to be someone so obvious. Um, it also isn't going to be a betrayal if she does because, I mean, we expected nothing else from her, really. Yeah. Uh, someone said Flint. I don't. So they said Flint again, and I don't think so. I don't think Flint's, <laughs> no. gonna, Flint's not going to mess up again. Nah. Um, I got. Uh, it's got to be a big one. So maybe Jackson. Um, someone said Macy's mom in the librarian. No, I don't think Macy's mom is going to be it because I feel like we don't know her, so it's not gonna. It's not going to be a punch in the chest. I think either she is still like held captive somewhere, or she has died. I don't think that it would be possible no. for anybody to turn and Macy's mum into somebody because otherwise, why would Grace's mum and dad, the one person that they would trust above all else, is Rowena? 
Right. They say, like, we need to call Rowena Foster, which we don't know that that's Macy's mom, but it's probably Macy's mom. You like, can put two and two together. Yeah, exactly. Um, One person said Nuri. Nuri's already done her kind of, like, little betrayal. And and she sacrificed a shit ton. Yeah. She has given up her dragon. Um, which is, like, um, giving up part of your soul as well. Like, she's given her soul to Jackson, essentially. A bunch of people are saying Macy. What? One person said, I'm sorry, but I'm very suspicious of Macy. Why? Why is what? What What reasons? Give us the reasons. We're not saying you're wrong. We just need evidence. Yeah, you got to give us some justification. Same with Hudson. Um, <laughs> Calder and Remy. No, I... I don't like her. Uh, I don't like I don't think answer. Calder. I think Calder is too self-centered, um, but in a self-protection way. I think that she's a very genuine person. She just likes to hide it with the idea that she's conceited, but she's not. Remy, I was concerned about until I was thinking that he has no reason to betray them because he hates Cyrus as much as everyone else. Yeah. Like the moment in the prison where she, um, Grace says that the reason why they need to escape the prison is to defeat Cyrus. He's like, okay, I'm on board. Let's do it. And Cold is like, hey, I will do anything to make sure I get a stab at that guy. So let's do this. Yeah. And that, I don't think that, that, yeah. That's why I think that they're going to come back with like a vengeance with the whole prison on board for the <laughs> war. So And all the manticores. Yeah. Yeah. That would be that would be epic. Yeah, and we get to see the actual manticore rather than just the redhead, the human version of them. Um, one person said Jackson in the order, but not on purpose, though. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. okay. I mean, yeah. Another person said I mean, Macy. Uh, no. And then we had one person said reunion with Heather, and then another one said Heather will come back. And we're going to find out Heather isn't actually her friend and she'll betray Grace. Goddamn Heather wear crab. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm on board with Amka. I'm on board with Heather. I'm on board with the blood letter. And I'm, I'm, I can, I can see why Mackay might be one. Macy, I think is out of the question. I'm, I'm going to put my like flag in the dirt right now. Uh, Flint, <laughs> Die on this I think hill. is out of the question. Yuri, I think is out of the question. Hudson, I think is out of the question. Jackson, maybe. Um, I also really hope that did um, Tracy hint at, at any idea of any of the wolves being actually part of this as well. I'm really sad that the one good wolf that we got is dead Got like moitered. Xavier was great and I'm kind of sad that we've not only lost Xavier but we've also lost Cole and so the wolves aren't really any main characters anymore maybe Cyrus will get the delinquent school to fight in the war uh, <laughs> yeah I mean god knows if anybody's loyal to Cyrus it will probably be the delinquent school yeah I'm like looking through oh, the man. quotes that Tracy's posted just I'm to see. I'm sad about Macy now. I just we will find out. We will find out what Hudson's promised. Yes, because um, she's she stated that. Also, because <laughs> I reread that scene very recently, i.e., yesterday, it wasn't that he whispered or kept it secret. Grace just point blank wasn't listening and was doing goo goo eyes at him and I wasn't paying attention. And that's the reason why she doesn't know what he promised. Because the giant that was selling them the ring even commented like, wow, that was beautiful. And Grace was like, what was? And Hudson just smirks. And it was like, you really, you weren't paying attention. That's me. So this, this whole time... If she was listening, she would have, she would have known what it was. That's 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 a me moment. I would, <laughs> and we get to find out who poofed the wolves, Jackson. He he poofed yeah. them. But oh. that does mean about the promise that it does mean that nothing that Hudson wouldn't would have been ashamed of or set not been willing to say in front of Grace out loud, um, would have been said because she was literally there, unless. 
the very reason for a soli a soli promise ring thing is that the the ring bearer or the ring wearer or whatever you want to call it isn't aware of the promise being made in which case that's really dumb promise mm. and it does make me slightly concerned because the way that Vanda and Falia or Falia however you pronounce it speak of that promise is that it will burn the wearer for as long as the promise isn't fulfilled so when when he promised her that he would always find his way back to her and was stuck in the prison it burned her every day for a thousand years i hope that the promise isn't like i'll love you forever like oh. and then one day it starts burning and she's like you son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> He's leaving cinnamon rolls she, on someone else's yeah. doorstep. It's like, turns out she just got washing up liquid underneath it and she's, she's got a bad case of psoriasis. <laughs> I like how you said psoriasis. It was psoriasis. Psoriasis. <laughs> um, so, so much sciatica. <laughs> okay, so you have homework. You have homework um, because you're done reading Covet. Mm -hmm. I have to finish Covet. So um, we'll go ahead and end the podcast here. But in the meantime, your homework is to go into our Trello board, scroll over. Oh, and go, read, oh, and read, the, read the bonus chapters? Read the bonus chapters. You must okay. read the bonus chapters. Okay. Um, I don't have... Well, the, I've, read, I've, read the, I've read one of them. I don't just don't remember which one. <laughs> oh, well, they're short. They'll take you like, they'll take you five minutes. They're insanely short. So read the bonus chapters. That way you have all angles going into this. You've already read mm -hmm. Catmere Guide. Um, I, if I have time, I'll re-skim Catmere Guide, just maybe like the important stuff. Um, and, and then we'll go into this fully knowledgeable about everything. The only bonus chapter we're missing is Gargoyle Court. So we need to find that. Well, um and if you see anybody mentioning in the groups that they want to reread all of the books that they just kind of need a a skim through um because they realize that it's going to take way too long for them to suddenly have to read before court is uh is apparent share, share them the link to this podcast um we've worked it out as of next week, it will be exactly 24 hours of content. <laughs> yeah, you can. And and also, if you don't want to read the first book, because let's let's all be real. The first book is not the best book out of all of them. The first, I mean, I know that no. there's a couple Jackson fanatics out there, but I could really, I'm, I'm already broken up with Jackson mentally. I'm Team Hudson now. Um, but, I broke up with him the moment that she touched him at the chess table. Yeah, it's it's like a, it's personal space, Jackson. Ew, personal space. But um, if you want to take in like all of the essence of the first book, other than the ending with Hudson like popping up in the sword and all that, that's the only scene not included in the Crave Chapters game. And you don't have to pay for the credits. There's a bunch of scenes like that you can unlock, like J Jackson will text you. And it's the same text that are in the book. And you, you pay real money to unlock them if you want to read them. Otherwise, Grace just gets mad and deletes them. But it has no impact on the story. So if you wanted to, you could look at the book and see what he actually texts. But none of it's important. You can play it all for free. It took me about four hours to get through it which is a lot faster than it would take me to get through the whole book and then you know it, it summarizes it quite well i think it's it's the exact dialogue all of the talking just minus the not talking if that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> and you get to make some funny decisions you do jackson takes you up into the northern lights and you're like no put me back down <laughs> you get to be really mean to Jackson. Are you like, oh, Jackson's texted me. What do I do? Ignore them? <laughs> <laughs> Delete the text. And don't look at them. <laughs> they make you feel guilty too. Oh. <laughs> anyway. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have one more thing. I have one more thing. Ooh, you can ooh, make Jackson ooh, ooh, black. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, you can make him any color you want. Which, you know, that's catmere purple. No, you can't make him a fun, like crazy oh. rainbow color. But yeah, you can you can make Jackson um, a multitude of skin tones to um, fit your Jackson fantasies. So that's oh. that's interesting. Um, See, I I have the idea that because their last name is Vega, that they're slightly Hispanic. Okay, that's okay but that's can... never ever teased in anything when they've been described no. it's never ever mentioned i'm pretty sure that they describe jackson as being alabaster very, which is yeah, like very white 
alabaster is about as that's like white with i think that's gray. just because, like you you can be hispanic and still very white and it's probably because he never leaves his tower because he's a creepy ass man who has no life especially especially when he like gets rid of all his personality and he's just working out all the time <laughs> jackson bodybuilder jackson he's he's still like i don't know i i just like imagine him like ja- jacked jackson Jack. okay yeah and and yeah he does all of this and then he's still lost weight and it's not like bulking up at all no you gotta eat you gotta eat to sustain that bro where's where's your blood shake man where's your blood shake mass gainer you need to be eating like more fat fattening blood pick a nice big fat bear or something for your blood mm. uh, all right on on that note yeah guys thanks for listening next week is probably going to be a long episode it's going to be a crazy episode we're probably going to yell a lot my husband's going to (laughs) be mad because he's going to have to deal with the mic clipping when he's um fixing our podcast audio we might even have to we might even have to schedule in a pee break (laughs) yeah but it's going to be a heck of an episode and if it ends up being too long we'll split it we'll do like a split thing and I'll split the We'll pot. do a Breaking Dawn part two. Yeah, we'll do Breaking Dawn part two. Breaking breaking up with Jackson part two. Breaking Crown part Break, two. Breaking Crown part two. All right, guys. That sounds like I'm giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> Crowning part two. Oh, no. I don't want it once. I don't want it twice. All right, guys. Thanks okay. for listening. And we will see you uh, next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.